Cosmology segment, it'll be integrated into the Daily Space Weather video, unlike yesterday's Cosmology segment. If you missed yesterday's Daily Space Weather video or Cosmology segment, check them out. They are separate. Today's is not separate, it's integrated. So let's get to it. Twitch.tv slash Smashamash. We're also on BitChute. Check out our exclusive content there. Thanks to our new subscribers over on YouTube. Don't forget to press like and subscribe. Share with your friends, foes, science noobs, and science pros. Tell them about the channel. Welcome them to, welcome them to the neo-renaissance. Visit our own site. Today's featured product is available at this link right here, Smash Home Merch. Thanks to everybody who's been picking up merch. It really helps us out a lot and helps to support our cause. Today's featured merch is the Vaccinate This classic t-shirt. Since my vaccination status is none of your business and HIPAA has not expired with the pandemic, perhaps pick up one of those. I like the blaze orange color because nothing says don't run me over or shoot me like a blaze orange shirt. Today's cosmology segment's got some interesting features. How about solar wind coming from the center of the earth? How, how could that be a thing? It's, well, it, it's, it's got to do with isotopic ratios. Isotopic ratios, that's right. Is it possible that the Earth's core sucked up solar wind material billions of years ago? Well, it's entirely possible. But in any case, mantle plumes showing a very consistent isotopic ratio between helium and neon consistent with the solar wind, an indication that there's a little bit of the sun inside the core of the Earth, perhaps. So maybe check out this article on phys.org. And I'll just let it scroll in case you'd like to read it right through our video. Today's random number is 367, which coincides with a quite interesting object, a tidal disruption flare. Yes, so a tidal disruption flare, folks, is what happens when a star gets eaten by a black hole. Does it really get eaten by a black hole? That's the real question. And ultimately, the answer is that we don't know. So this object here, the Swift J1112.2-8238 is a tidal disruption flare. And this is uh, possibly a star being sucked up by a black hole, a quote, black hole, end quote. A massive flare that came out of a now dark part of space. So I would show you this on the, the Sinbad or the Aladdin light. It's just that there's nothing to see. Although, this, this apparently star, which is now gone, is still producing x-rays. So here you can see the daily chart of this, quote, tidal disruption flare, end quote. And this x-ray source has been producing x-rays over the past 16 years, despite being a, quote, tidal disruption event. So whatever was going on with the massive radio source here, we, we ultimately don't know, but it's still producing x-rays, which are coming out of a dark part of space. Let's move on. And by the way, again, today's featured object is number 367 at the Neil Gorel Swift Bat X-ray Observatory. It's got 1,031 objects that are monitored in terms of their hard X-ray output. And that's what we came up with today, number 367, a tidal disruption flare X-ray source, Swift J1112.2-8238. Let's talk about a totally psychedelic stellar nursery, bruh. It's crazy, bruh. And here it is, located about 5,000 light years away in the constellation of Sagittarius. This, this lagoon nebula here is, is uh, quite a spot. And what you're looking at here is a composite of infrared light. And, and by the way, that's in false color since your eyes can't see infrared light. Infrared light and visible bands from the 8-meter Gemini South Telescope. So this is about a 20-light-year section of space, again located at about 5,000 light-years distance in between the Sun and the galactic core in the Sagittarius constellation. The southern cliff in the lagoon. A bunch of dusty areas, and there are some herbig haro objects there, which are a, a type of very dusty oblong stars. We won't get into it in today's cosmology segment. Next, I'd like to thank our patrons, the true stars and sources of funding for our content. Please consider becoming a patron if you'd like 
even earlier alerts than you'll ever receive on places like YouTube, Twitch, or BitChute. Patreon.com slash Smashamash. Also, you get all kinds of cutting-edge science information. The latest of what we're up to, behind-the-scenes stuff, multimedia, music, ringtones, and more. Let's talk about a supernova. What's going on with this supernova? Well, it's interesting to say the least. How did it do what it did? It's completely outside the realm of normality when it comes to supernovae, which aren't particularly normal in the first place. Why did this why did this star have practically no hydrogen on its surface when it went supernova? This is not believed to be a thing that's possible. So, how did it happen? Could it be because the standard model of stellar evolution is completely wrong? That would be my first guess. Could it be because stars are made out of condensed matter and not diffuse gaseous plasmas? That would be also consistent with my first guess. And we're just letting the article scroll here. This is from SciTechDaily.com. Why are the chemical abundances as they are? This star's discovery provide here's a quote from the article from Charles Kirkpatrick, astrophysicist. This star's discovery provides some of the most direct evidence ever found that stars experience catastrophic eruptions, which cause them to lose mass before an explosion. Now the supernoval output from this star did collide with a cloud of hydrogen. Did that come from the star originally? Well the answer is we don't know. But there is a possibility that for some reason stars shed their hydrogen before exploding. What do they do after that? What do they do before that? Who the heck knows? But that's what's going on with that, and you can find the full article linked on the SciTech Daily article. The full paper, a cool and inflated progenitor candidate for type 1b supernova 2019 YVR at 2.6 years before explosion. The full article, again linked at SciTech Daily from their article. Cheers! That's today's cosmology segment. And we'll say goodbye to Twitch. We'll bring you back, Twitch, for the meteorology segment.